All right, back again. I keep getting paused by things I don't see. I actually changed this from what it was. Maybe you saw in a previous video or something else towards the end. You saw, hey, that's not the same question. I changed it. Changed it into graphing. So you're supposed to graph this guy between negative 2 and 1. And you need to be thinking about this as y equals 3. Now, it is. it starts at negative 2 and it stops ridiculously close to negative 1. Starts at negative two and it stops ridiculously close at one. So I open hole the one uh, right there. Open hole. This guy, you know, she, it's a line. These are all lines, by the way. I'm not trying to throw you off. I'm going to plug in a one and I'm going to plug in a three and I'm going to open hole that three. Okay. If I plug in a 1, looks like I spit back a 4. If I plug in a 3, I return an 8. So 1, 4 exists on here. It is solid whole. And so does 3, 8, but 3, 8 is open. And then we have negative x if x is greater than or equal to 3. So we have x, we have negative x, we can plug in a 3, we can plug in a 5. We just need two points, right? But I have to start with this one. So when I plug in a 3, I get a negative 3 back. If I plug in a 5, I get a negative 5 back. And I could continue that pattern forever. I could. So it's going to continue on to the right forever. And there is that particular piecewise function. And it is a piecewise function because while there are vertical gaps, there are no horizontal gaps. And that's the big thing about being piecewise. Oh, there's one more. It's the bonus. There is a table of values that describes f of x, and you're supposed to create a table for negative f of 2x plus 3. And I would do this in multiple parts. You reflect, you stretch, you shift. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a small table for the reflection. And that is a vertical which means it changes y. And the x values, the input, does not change. There's still 8, 12, and 14. But the y values change their sign. Now I'm going to handle this stretch that cuts x in half. It's the reciprocal of whatever number you see. So we have a new table. It is a progression of the preceding table. Four, six, I don't know why I made so many blanks. Seven, who knows. It has no effect on the output, only the input. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this shift up three. Shift. Can't write, it's too early in the morning. That's going to add three to Y. So I'm going to take all these y values and add 3. It would be negative 2, negative 6, and then 6. And no effect on the input. And there is my table describing the transformation. If you don't like that, you should probably take bridge math next year. You should. I don't say that to be mean. Just say that to be honest, because that's what I am. Anyways, hope you learned something.